Welcome to Getting Real with Real Estate with Danielle Kempf and Jim Kempf, St. Louis's favorite father-daughter real estate team. Your source of real estate information in the greater St. Louis area. Hello, welcome. Hey, hey, Thanks for tuning on? in today. All right, I'm glad we're all here today. We are, we're all here and we got a special guest with us. We got Christy Hausman, Senior Loan Officer with Precision Mortgage, joining us on the show today. Thanks for coming today. Yes, we appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Excited. So, yay. <laughs> so Christy's going to talk more about the FHA loans with us. But first, we got a tradition on the show. We're going to do a joke. Right. And Jim's going to tell the joke today. All right, I get the joke. You ready? You get the joke. Go. All right, here we go. So who do you talk to when you want to get out of debt? It's a person. Who do you talk to? Uh, your parents. <laughs> that's probably that's a good, a good answer. answer. I like that one. Can I borrow some kids? Yeah. Wait a minute. No, that's the wrong answer. Sorry, folks. Morgan Freeman. Oh, God. <laughs> we told you it was going to be corny. I like, ooh, I like it. Go ahead. Uh, All right. So I guess before we dive on in today, Christy, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, about your history and background? Sure, sure. So I have been a lender now for just a little bit over three years. Okay. Um, you guys know I started with a retail lender and I'm now in the world of wholesale lending. So the difference between that is just I'm working for a small little brokerage. Um, we are sort of the middleman in between your client, the buyer, and the lender. Yeah. So I'm able to shop across multiple different lenders to match our clients with the best loan option for oh, that's them. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah cool. Very yeah. cool. Okay. Um, I was in medical sales for over 20 years. I'm gonna have to take this off. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay. Whacking it. Um, my parents, you guys know, are in real estate. Yep. Yep. And during the pandemic, I just realized I needed a shift. Gotcha. Um, a lot of people realize that during totally. 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> And I knew I wanted to stay in a field where I was helping people, which mm -hmm. is what I really loved about medical sales. And my mom and dad kind of brainstormed with me some other ideas. And I thought about real estate. Yeah. Um, but I don't know that I could handle, like, with the little kids and mm -hmm. all the schedules and everyone all over the yes. place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and figured this would be the next best option. Awesome. So I love it. Good. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we started right around the same time. You were kind of my buddy in getting started. Yeah, right. <laughs> we were our referral partners for each other. So I've known Chrissy since I got in the business pretty much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. You ready to dive on in? I'm ready. All right. Cool. First question. What would you say is the typical client for like an FHA loan? Okay. Or customer, I guess is the right word. Right, right. So um, when I sit down and do a consult call with a client, mm -hmm. there's some basic information that we gather. I always will initially want to see if we can get them approved for a conventional loan. Okay. Um, if they are not going to meet the requirements for a conventional loan, FHA is, is the best option for them. Gotcha. So, um, with an FHA, for an FHA buyer, you can, um, I don't know how to word this correctly. So anywhere from like 580 on the low end for a credit score okay. up to some people as high as 720 end up going FHA. Oh, okay. gotcha. You'll see that like each individual person, it's, it's a, it's not like a one one size fits all. Yeah, it's like, okay. like case by case. Case situation. by case. So some people that could go conventional may be better served to go FHA. Okay. And we can dig into that a little bit more okay. if you want to further down when we start talking yeah. about some of the yeah, but FHA I, well, requirements. Kind of the next yeah. thing we were going to ask about was just like basic qualifications. You mentioned the credit score, of course, that's mm -hmm. one piece of it. Right. Are there other qualifications that, I mean, is there, I'm sure, like debt to income, things of that, yes. that nature? What so we'll look at their debt to income ratio. Okay. Mm -hmm. And with FHA, you can go a little bit higher on your DTI. So you can go up to 55%. Okay. Whereas with a conventional, you really want to be closer to 45%. Mm -hmm. You can you can push 50, but they, if you have to have like some other scenarios like reserves mm -hmm. okay. for a conventional approval whereas with fha you can go with a higher dti okay. Okay. you can go with a lower credit score if you're more of a 580 um, you can get fha approval with possibly putting a little bit more down than three and a half percent 
um, having some reserves. Mm -hmm. So there's there's different ways to really try to squeeze everyone into that okay. approval. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Now, do those and, and I, this might be the wrong terminology here, but do those FHA loans also have to qualify for like Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae's kind of underwriting guidelines? Isn't there like a, a program like the automated program? underwriting? Yeah, like something like that. So, Is that part of that or not so much? So we. All loans, like when someone comes in, and let's say that you have a client that comes to me for a pre-approval mm -hmm. or pre-qualification, mm -hmm. um, we run them through, it's called automated underwriting, and that is you have Freddie and you have Fannie for your guidelines. Okay. And um, that will toss out an approval, like an approved eligible, an approved, a, a like refer, and it will tell us exactly what we need to gather from an information standpoint to get an approved eligible, oh, okay. Okay. if that makes sense. Yeah, I think yes. so. Yeah, mm -hmm. cool. That's yeah. awesome. And then cool. what would you say are some pros and cons of FHA? Okay. So, and I put down some notes here so that I can try to give you some. Yeah, the There's, one, you mentioned debt to income okay. already. Definitely debt to pro, income. Right? So those, those things one. that we hit on. Yeah. The lower credit score. Mm -hmm. right. If you have a lower credit score, this is, is a loan program for you. Right. Yeah. Um, the, there's something that recently happened in February of 23, there's a, a, um, home affordability act that, so there's more, a mortgage insurance premium, mm -hmm. which is your MIP mm -hmm. that is, can be seen as a pro and a con. Yeah. Um, it's in an FHA loan. It never goes away. Whereas with a conventional, your mortgage insurance goes away once you've hit 80% uh, or 78%. Okay. Yep. yep. Um, the way that it's calculated is based on its basis points. So mortgage insurance premium used to be 85 basis points, which just means it's like 0.85% um, okay. mm -hmm. yep. of your loan amount. Okay. Yep. Now it's down to 55%. Oh, that's uh, a big drop. Yeah. Or 0.55% right, of right. your loan amount. So it does. So I just, I put on here just for the purpose of, of looking at like a three hundred thousand dollar home purchase, mm -hmm. yeah. that dropped mortgage insurance from it would have been two hundred and eight dollars a month okay. down to one hundred and thirty five dollars a month. Wow, that's just that's significant awesome. savings. Yeah, that's yeah great. absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Okay. okay. Um, a con is that there is an upfront funding fee for okay. FHA loans, and it's one point seven five percent of the loan amount. Okay. There's no getting around that. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, it's you can pay it at closing as a closing cost, mm -hmm. or you can roll it into your loan amount, which is what most people do. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So it's just a few bucks a month then. For <laughs> Hopefully, right. <laughs> well, that's a couple. Right. That's a couple. I mean, bucks, it's, I'm sure. if you're purchasing a three hundred thousand dollar home, it's you know a little bit over a five thousand right. dollar charge. Wow. So oh. that's why I say if we can go conventional, conventional right. is. Mm -hmm a better, more affordable product, okay. Okay. but FHA is our second best option. Are, are yeah. you seeing the rates with FHA are a little bit lower than conventional? Is that typical or is that just today's They are. Today's more. Today, yeah, yeah they, are yeah. Yeah. they are lower. They are lower. But you, that's that's what I'm saying. You, There's some buyers that, let's say that they have a 680 credit score mm -hmm. and we have them approved to go conventional. Their mortgage and they're not putting maybe they're putting their first time home buyer and they're putting three percent down, mm -hmm. or five they're putting less than twenty percent down. Right. Their lower credit score is going to make their mortgage insurance more expensive. So you can always look at an FHA loan as another option for them, and it could potentially be lower. Okay. Interesting. I have a client that just asked the same scenario. He was a, an over 800 credit score buyer. Wow. And was like, well, I see that FHA loans are lower than conventional loans. Right. I'm like, well, they are, but <laughs> your mortgage insurance is going to be about $40 a month uh, because right. your credit score is so high. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, so that. So we went with average. conventional for him. Okay. Right. I got you. Huh. Okay, cool. So we see like on our side, especially with our listings, right? At least what our sellers typically look at the conventional loan as a little bit better option for a them. Stronger option. It's a little stronger, mm -hmm. right, than an FHA. So from a competitive, I guess, nature with our buyers, we, I mean, obviously it'd be easier to be conventional versus FHA. Yep. And, but one thing that I think that the sellers kind of look at is that appra the, the FHA appraisal, right, that we talk about where, 
you know, they're kind of looking over the condition of the house, and people get scared of that a little bit, but it's not so bad, right? I it's mean, really not. Yeah. Okay. What, what kind of stuff are they looking for? It's really not. I mean, they're looking for, the, so there's three main buckets that they're looking at. Okay. There's safety of the mm-hmm. property, okay. security of the investment, mm-hmm. and um, soundness of the structure. Okay. okay. So for safety, they're going to look at for, like, if there's a missing handrail, if there's like a wobbly deck post, right, mm-hmm. right. something that someone could really injure themselves. Yeah, maybe okay. some broken glass and windows. Yeah, Just something that like could that. pose like a safety issue. Safety yeah. issue. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Yeah. Safety. Um, Hence the term. Hence yes. the term. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty self explanatory. <laughs> Lead based paint, if there's chipping um, paint yes. and the home was built before 78. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, those sorts of things they can look at. Okay. Um, a conventional appraisal can cite the same things. Can it? Okay. Yeah. Ex- explain that a little bit. Cause so, but the, there's, I feel like the FHA appraisal has this ugly stigma right now. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I would agree with you. Yeah. And it really is not that much different than a conventional right. appraisal. So they're I've had conventional same... appraisals come back where stuff has to be done prior right. to funding. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You mentioned that before the show, and that's interesting to note because um, I've really only heard of that once, and there was another agent in my office, and it was recently. Yeah. But they had that exact situation where the appraisal on a conventional loan came back and said they needed like a sump pump or something. Right? Mm-hmm. So that's pretty extensive. Yeah. Right. Right. But right. I guess it can happen either way. Yeah. yeah. So... Okay. I think like if you look at it from like the strength of the um, credit worthiness of a buyer, mm-hmm. okay. people are thinking that a conventional buyer is of higher credit standing right. than your yeah. FHA right. buyers. Not always the case though. Not always the yeah. case. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Cool. Okay. Interesting. You want to maybe talk about, about Yeah, the down payment requirements. Just you kind of mentioned that a little bit. You said three and a half percent for right. FHA, right? Three and a half percent for FHA. And then the other question I would just on top of that, I guess, is like uh, can, can someone gift a client some money, like a parent? You can. Something like that. Okay. Yeah, so gift funds are allowed. That? Talk about that a little bit if you would. So if you have you see this a lot with first time home buyers. Yep. Uh-huh. Um and a parent wants to gift funds mm-hmm. to the buyer. Not all parents. Not obviously. all parents want to do that. Yeah. Not all. I have a 19-year-old. Don't even think about that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, gift funds are allowed for an FHA loan. Okay. Um, three and a half percent is your minimum down payment. Typically, right. you'll get some of the lower credit score FHA buyers where we won't get an approved eligible with three and a half percent down. And I'll try 5% down. Oh, and okay. then possibly sometimes you have to get them to put 10% down. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, the 3.5% isn't a given. Oh, gotcha. okay. I didn't right. know that. But it's based on the credit either. score. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, cool. What about, like, uh, seller concessions? So that's so the other piece. Is seller. that a good, I think it's better probably for the buyer, right? It can be with FHA? It can be. Okay. So with a with an FHA loan, you can get up to 6%. Okay. regardless of, of what the client is putting down as their down payment. Whereas with conventional, it's three, six, and nine. If you're putting ten per, under 10% down on a conventional loan, the max seller concession is 3%. Okay. And then it's um, then it goes up to, to 6% and oh, then a max okay. of 9% if you're putting 25% down or gotcha. more. Okay. And that's based on the loan amounts, right, I guess? It, yeah. Yes, loan okay. amount. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, okay cool. cool. Right on. Okay. And then, what are the, what are, what are, we talk about, yeah, the process. Yeah, once you're under, once the buyer gets under contract, we kind of talked a little bit about the appraisal, but go a little bit more in depth about what the process looks like once the, the buyer is under contract. Under contract? Yeah. So um, when we go through the pre-approval process, mm-hmm. I get all of their documents that will need to be submitted to underwriting. So that is one piece that I think if you're working with the right lender, Mm -hmm. um, they're going to be very thorough in their information gathering up front. So if I have someone that goes under contract, I I may need an updated bank statement. I may need an updated pay stub, something like that. Right. But I have everything else that I need. Okay. That's awesome. And so we'll submit to underwriting right away. 
um, as soon as we've decided, we can float a rate and submit to underwriting, or we can lock the rate and proceed forward. Okay. Yep. Um, so you'll get that squared away. Then we will order the appraisal. You guys will typically want to do the inspection prior to try, yeah. appraisal. Yeah. <laughs> if we can. If we can. If we can. That's a good idea. Yeah, we always have to try and do that. So then we'll get the appraisal back. And I mean, our average time with my new, with, with uh, Precision Mortgage mm -hmm. is 12 days. That's amazing. Wow. From submission to clear to close. That's awesome. That's really and what's, I think that just what I heard you say there that I think is important, or us realtors think is important, mm -hmm. is the fact that, so you're not just pre-qualifying somebody, you're pre-approving them and you're checking all their stuff, right? Correct. Beforehand and they, they're already in, I mean, they, you know, It's right? kind of like a pre-underwritten, right? Yeah. Uh, it's so pretty we, close, right? I right. Mean, yeah. We have them as a buyer, their whole financial piece is underwritten and approved. That's, That's awesome. awesome. We're just waiting on the property information. Yeah. Right. Right. So we'll need to make sure that it's insurable. So that's one of the things that we do immediately right. yeah. is make sure that they contact and, and figure out their insurance agent mm -hmm. okay. um, and then title and that's yeah. it. Yeah. Pretty simple stuff. Yeah. Get an appraisal on the house and there you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then it's just finding them. That's what we got to do. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> it's been tough. I mean, it has it, been I a little tricky right But now. It is, it's helpful for like the way you do things compared to some other places that I've seen do things. You know, we you, we then know that that client is ready to go, truly ready. Truly to go. ready to go. Because right. you see pre approvals all day long from, I won't mention names. names. Don't name the names. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and and those, really, they're not worth the paper they're written on. Exactly. Time, in my opinion. So yeah. that's you, all. That's great that you do that. You have to protect everybody. Right. Like yeah. in my position, that's the role right. that I play. Yeah. yeah. Protect the buyer from getting under contract on something that they can't truly afford. Yeah protect your time because it's hard to get people under contract right now and if it they is. are pre-approved for 400,000 in reality they can only afford 300 <laughs> that really is not fun that's a, yeah that's a, a rough conversation that then. is a tough one that's a tough one all right cool okay. well i think uh, any other yeah. topics or things that you yeah. can think of that we might need to know about that um i i think like the the biggest takeaway here is if you're looking to purchase, it's great to get in contact with a lender that will explore every option for you. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. And I think um, one of the neat things about Precision Mortgage is, like you said, you can shop around all the different places to find the best rate out there right. for your client. You're really saving them a lot of money in some situations. Absolutely. Yeah. When we have folks who are just looking for a house, you know, we talk about it's important to get a team together, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And that's you and that's us. Really, mm -hmm. we're the team for that client. Yeah. Right. And it's great to know that we have partners like you that, that can help people and point them in the right direction and mm -hmm. have options for them because that's really important. Yeah, it's not, not just, just a, setting them in one specific mold. Yeah, yeah. It's not a one-size-fits-all in this business, right? right? Absolutely. right? So that's and awesome. it's also not transactional. Like, yeah. I want, if a year after they close, they have a question about something, yeah. Call me. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm yeah. here to help. If rates go help. down, you can help them again, right? Maybe well, a refi right. or yeah. whatever. Right? <laughs> whatever it may When they go down. <laughs> when they go, if they ever go down. Uh, maybe. Oh, well, that's funny. Awesome. All, All right. right. Cool. Well, want to wrap it up? Let's wrap it on up. Go right ahead. So thanks for tuning on in, Chrissy. We really appreciate you taking the time yeah. to come sit with us and help give us some more information um, on FHA 201. Yeah, it was super informative. Good. Thank you for coming by. And yeah. just folks out there, if you're considering you know, buying or selling, especially buying, mm -hmm. anytime soon. And it, it really don't even have to be soon. We'd love to meet you. We'd love to chat. Yeah. We'd love to hook you up with Christy and, and get a plan for you to help you get into a Absolutely. house when you're ready. Get ready to take the first step. We got your team ready for you. There we go. All right. Awesome. Perfect. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Thanks. See you later. You've been listening to Getting Real with Real Estate with the Kemp team. Have questions about real estate or something you'd like to discuss? Contact the Kemp team at 314-336-1926 or visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Kemp team. Don't want to miss any episodes? Follow us on your favorite podcast app or YouTube. The Kemp team, real, honest, real estate.